Madam Speaker, um, just words and no action. Article 248 of the Presidential Address, this is what it says, Madam Speaker. Government will eradicate fraud and corruption in all aspects of public life. Meanwhile, the, le, le pays a dégringolé de 5 places in Transparency International Corruption Potential Index. My first question is, Madam, is this, since the Prime Minister has talked about POCA, is he going to amend the Prevention of Corruption Act to include the President as a public official, thereby doing away with his or her, it will apply to anyone, his or her immunity? Madam Speaker, I have just uh, mentioned in my reply that uh, there is a committee at the level of uh, ICAC which is uh, looking at all the aspects of the legislation and that will ma be making proposals with regard to the review of the Prevention of Corruption Act. Let us wait for those recommendations. Government, of course, will uh, look into those recommendations and whatever needs to be added on top of that, we will look into that. I would like to, uh, the Honourable Prime Minister to consider seriously, including the President, in that uh, definition of a public official. Now, Madam, uh, Madam Speaker, with regard to traffic d'influence, I would like to ask the Honourable Prime Minister whether he will include MPs that may be bought to cross the floor <coughs> and join the government in return for a ministerial post or PPS, etc. Will he include that under POCA as well, Prevention of Corruption Act, so that ICAC can investigate and even make it retro retrospective, retroactive? Why not? Madam Speaker. Madam Honourable Jagu. Honourable Bagwan, please. The, the leader of the opposition is now very concerned with the issue of transfuge. Always? I think he was, maybe he has forgotten. Let me remind him that he was a member of the Labour PMSD government. Initially, MSM also. And then when we had left the government, there were three members who crossed the floor from the MSM. Mireille Martin, Jim Sitaram, and Pratiba Boulas. Now, six? You bought six? Ah. Honorable Thierry Henry and Honorable Sewoxin, please don't disrupt the debate. Honorable Henri saying that they have bought six. Well, now, we know, we know, we all know what happened. And uh, therefore, we have been the victim of crossing the floor. And we are very concerned, we are very concerned with that issue. And therefore, we have been, we have been looking at legislation. In fact, the honorable member, the Honourable uh, Leader of the Opposition was himself chairing please. a committee and uh, there was a proposal with regard to the amendment to be brought to the Rodrigues Regional Assembly. And uh, we have looked into that with, re with regard to whether the recommendations that were made would stand the test of constitutionality. I must say, I'm, I must Please. say, I must say, they are very complex issues, and we are still uh, looking at it. And eventually, if we are able to come up with such a leg legislation, I believe that would be uh, in the interest of all parties concerned. Madam, Madam Speaker, the Honourable Prime Minister may not be aware that the law on Rodrigues was approved by SLO, State Law Office, and sent to Cabinet, and it was removed at the request of the then Prime Minister from the final bill. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I would like to say that in the, in the last electoral uh, manifesto, l'Alliance de Peuple came up very strongly, une loi anti-transfuse. So no use coming back to the previous government. 
what the previous government is, is of no concern to the thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who have voted for this government and who are listening to the television now. Une la entre transfuse was in the electoral program, Madam Speaker, and this is why the people of Mauritius want to know why that is not being done. Firstly, in terms of anti-defection bill. Secondly, in terms of including under POCA, where surely there cannot be any uh, constitutional issues. With regard to the first issue that has been mentioned by the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, I have said, true it is that recommendations have been made when he was chairing that committee. But let me correct him that after, yes, I will correct you. You listen. After the matter has been looked at by the state law office, there were a number of legal issues that had arisen and that were sent back to the committee for us to review. This is the exact situation. It is not for not of wanting to bring the, uh, such legislation, Madam Speaker. Now, with regard to the second issue, yes, you are talking about anti-defection law. Well, again, you have been in government 2005, 2010. You have not been able to bring a... Yes, we, we are not yet... Order, order, please. Honorable Perron, what is it? From a sitting position, you are not allowed to make comments. I, I admit, Madam Speaker, that up to now, we have not been able to bring a bill before the House. Yes, but then, you should also, because why I'm saying this? Because you should, you know very well the complexity of this matter. You have been in government also. You've been working, you've been working on that. And, and I know... And I... Order, please. Madam, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, it is not, and let me say, it is not only when you have been in government previously. Uh, yeah, you, uh, the MMM, one. what, your charam are you talking? You, you, Second we have time. been together in government, 2000, 2005, anti-defection, we have been looking at it. But we have not been able to come up with a bill. Because you know why? Because it is a very complex issue. Some countries who have adopted anti-defection legislation, Unfortunately, they have, had, they have ended up with more problems than solutions. Therefore, we, we constantly need to look at it, and we welcome if there, there are proposals, if there are any ideas. Of course, we are open. We will look into that. Honorable oh, no, Babon, we'll look into that. the third time that I'm drawing your attention. I'll be very patient, but then, mind your favor. one thing about not being able to pass a law. There's another thing. We've gone completely against the spirit of the uh, Alliance Electorale uh, Manifesto in taking five transfers into the government, and the people can judge that, Madam Speaker. As for Rodriguez's concern, I maintain that it was approved by the SLO, and then it was, there was some, some uh, comment, and we forgot about it at the request of the then Prime Minister, Madam Speaker. Madam Madam Speaker. Speaker. Leader of opposition, I'll just draw your attention to the fact that you are not allowed to mention things which are by nature secret and which has been the subject of discussions between ministers when you were in government. Please. Madam Speaker, we are talking about freedom of information. No, Madam Speaker, well, again, what is the point of freedom and information? Madam Speaker. Order, please. Order. Madam Speaker, on the, on, in April 2016, a whole year ago, cabinet, government approved uh, the committee, our committees, my committee's work on financing of political parties. Completely approved it. Huh? It was sent to SLO and it's been lying there for one year. We have time for the prosecution commission bill. In two hours it can come to, to, to government. But this financing of political parties, one year, SLO still working on it, Madam Speaker. Does the Honourable Prime Minister find that acceptable? Let me maintain again what I have said, because the Honourable Leader of the Opposition should, maybe he's not aware no. when, he has, when he has left government. I maintain again that 
there are legal issues which have arisen with regard to the provisions of the recommendations of the anti-defection proposals that were made. Secondly, the financing of political parties. I have just answered, I have said that the matter is being looked at and being finalized at the level of our committee and is being worked out together with the uh, views of the state law office. Because there are a number of things I have mentioned, I don't want to repeat again to lose the time of the House, but I have mentioned those, those, amongst others, those issues that are now being looked at from the legal perspective. Once these are cleared, we will come to, to this House with a bill. And Speaker, the Honourable Prime Minister had beautiful words to say on procurement. I would ask him in his own finance act or last year. He introduced set clause six for the CEB, Central Electricity Board. So there's been so much talk about that. And, the C and it says it actually, Madam, allows the board of the CEB to create companies, any number of companies he, can, he wants to create. And, Madam Speaker, section 63 says this. The Public, Public Procurement Act shall not apply to any procurement exercise affected by a company set up under this subsection. It's here. If your memory is not good, I will table it, madam. I will table it. Order, please. Order, inside. Honorable Rupan, please. All the outside. It's own finance act, so you cannot get away from answering, Madam Speaker. What is the rationale, the reason for this? Because we are supposedly putting matters clean in, spec in, 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 in terms of public procurement, and I, I can take me to a space, I will not do. So. Uh, Madam Speaker, <laughs> let me, I will, I will look into this matter, and I don't. I don't think, no, I don't think that uh, this is the interpretation that we are giving. But uh, okay, okay, I will, I, will, I will look into... Honorable Thierry Henry, you keep interrupting. This is the second time I'm drawing your attention to this. I will, I will look into, into the matter, and if need be, of course, the, either the minister uh, responsible for, for this uh, issue will come up with a statement, or I will give the explanation. And all understand English, plain English, Madam Speaker. I'll table it in case she has trouble finding it in the Finance Act. Madam Speaker, on the declaration of assets, I would like to ask Honorable Prime Minister, when was the Colin Davelu, Honorable Colin Davelu Committee set up? When was that? I think it's about two years ago. And what has happened to this small amendment that was supposed to be made to a bill that had already been finalized on declaration of assets? It is not correct to say that a small amendment has to be made. I don't know when, what was your intention when you were in government, whether it would have been a small amendment. But we are, we are looking at the whole, at the whole uh, bill and, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, we, we, I, can, I can tell the House that the uh, committee chaired by the Honourable Deputy Prime Minister is going to finalize this, uh, 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 the working of this uh, report pretty soon. And of course, we'll have to, to be uh, uh, debated. We will come soon. No, uh, no need to wait. When you, you ask your you question, the minister sits down and listens to your question. Now, when he is replying, you also should give him the opportunity to reply. Let's try to be fair. Obviously, obviously, Madam. Obviously, Madam Speaker, I can't give an exact date of when the matter will be finalized. First of all, the matter will be finalized, and then it has to be discussed at the level of cabinet. And then, when we will uh, seek the views of stakeholders, also <coughs> probably, and then and then we'll come to this house. When the question is, his neighbour can surely remember when the committee was set up. That was the question. Oh. It was in January 2016. I'm informed. <coughs> yes, Honorable Bagwan. Hey, hey, happy talking. 
Okay. Um, oh, I don't know what is it? Oh, this is Sanko, please. Honorable Rupan, this is the second time that I am drawing your attention to interruptions. Yes, Madam Speaker, the Prime Minister has informed the House, the country and the nation of the intention of government to legislate, come up with new legislation concerning this uh, anti-corruption issue. And ICAC has been given responsibility to work out the document. But pending that, are we not seeing every Tuesday, even every day, these big potentates in the parastel bodies, government and companies, like the State Bank, we have a chairperson, and the Mauritius Telecom, recently the Trust Fund. They are, these people, these potentates, are daily engaged in corruption. We're being procurement. Jouissance. So can the Prime Minister inform the House? A restaurant will do. Can the Prime Minister inform the House? What immediate action intends to take, to, to take against these uh, potentates who are earning lot of mil millions of rupees, more than one million every month? Now, speaker, the Honourable Member is making gratuitous allegations. Just saying, as usual, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't, you can't even, you can't oh, even give evidence. Oh, you can't give an, you can't, you can't give an, you, you don't have anything to say. Honorable Bagwan, Honorable Bagwan, I have uttered your names four times, right, when I am on my feet, right? So, you ask your question. But when I utter names and four times, now next time I will have to act, okay? Yes. I now, would you continue? Yes, Honorable Prime Minister, you finished? Or? I'm saying, yes, Madam Speaker, I'm saying making general comments and general remarks instead of coming with specificities. And to show that you are serious, you should come with substance. Honorable Balamudi. Uh, this government was elected with 12 priorities, 12 priorities to be executed in the first three months of this government. Now we are more than nearly three years of this government. Combat la fraude de la corruption. La déclaration of assets action are amendé to inclure the propriété acquise sous le prétenon et la publication de toutes les informations dans la gazette du gouvernement. Can I ask the Honorable Prime Minister, when does he intend to come with a declaration of assets act? Three, year, three months have passed, nothing has been done. In the meantime, we know what's happening in the country. And will it be, will it, with this declaration of not only MPs, it will include also chairperson of parasitical bodies, advisors to ministers, and directors and CEO of government-owned companies. companies. So can we know when government intend to come, an urgent matter, and to have this declaration made public, not to be kept in the drawer of the ICAC? Now, Speaker, I am happy that the Honourable Member is making such remark today, because the time will come when within this mandate we will come before this house with a bill and then I will remind him what he has said today. Yes. Madam Speaker, may I uh, refer to Presidential Address Government Programme 2005-2010, paragraph 30. I will paraphrase very quickly. Yes, please, and, quickly, and and right now, because we are running out of time. But they also took time to paraphrase, to say... No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I have said that we are running out of time. Ask your question quickly. Honorable Balmudi. Paraphrasing para par paragraph 30, my ministers will adhere to a code of ethics and integrity and will invite senior public officials and managers of the private sector to do the same, paragraph 31. The law setting up the ICAC will be reviewed and the investigation and prosecution of fraudulent or corrupt acts will have to take place within legal framework that is more certain than result oriented. Can I ask the right honorable prime minister from Can I ask the right honorable prime minister and the only prime minister whether whether from record he can state to the House today, since 2005 to 2010, when the leader of opposition was in government, whether any of these happened? Obviously, 
the record uh, speak for itself that this did not happen. But on the contrary, the then Prime Minister did the opposite of what is stated here. Last question for the leader of opposition. International organizations agree. I just quoted Transparency International. That corruption now in Mauritius is worse than ever, at a historical worst. And I want to ask the Honorable Prime Minister. You are the last to talk. Now, now I want to ask the Honorable Prime Minister to give a commitment to the nation, a precise timetable, no beating about the bush, when all these laws that have been promised, including freedom of information, are going to come to this House for debate and for passing. Madam Speaker, I have said that in my reply that oh, yeah. the different <laughs> yes. I've, I've said that uh, there are different committees looking at different bills that we propose to bring before this house. Obviously, <clears throat> they are not matters which are simple, they are complex. That is why, in fact, previous governments have not been able to bring those legislation before the House. And, uh, and therefore, uh, if you want to speak in my place, you can speak. Yes. Honorable Mohamed. Making comments? Please. Don't interrupt. We are running out of time already. I've given already five additional minutes. And, and therefore, Madam Speaker, I can assure the House that all those legislations, once, once they are finalized... Please proceed with your answer. Pepsi Party is making a lot of money. Yeah. I don't know if he needs, he needs a drink. Order! Yeah. Order on this side of the house and the Nobel Jagru, please don't interrupt the Nobel Jagru. Nobel Jagru? Yes. So, uh, therefore, as I said in my reply, Madam Speaker, once those uh, bills will be finalized at the level of government, then they will be introduced in the house.